Hello, hello, happy Tuesday. It's Carrie G with Studio R12 Stencils and I am so low today for our live q and I see that I've popped up. Let me check and make sure I have audio. So low. Yep, I can hear myself. All right, guys, hi, happy Tuesday. I'm gonna wait for a couple of you to pop on. We can go over some um, housekeeping today we are talking about base coating and we're going to talk about all the all the things base coating different surfaces different applicators um, different mediums and all that good stuff so make sure that you ask your questions in the comments below since I am doing everything by myself I'm gonna try I have my computer over here so I'm gonna try to keep an eye on comments and answer them as then questions and answer them as they come in but I'm going to be sharing links and answering questions as soon as we wrap up today. So if there's anything in particular you would like um, a link for, just be sure to let me know. Okay, so talk about some housekeeping. Be sure that you are heading over to Studio R12's YouTube channel and subscribing so that you can see our latest videos when we add them. We have been adding um, different tutorials. We have been adding our live Q and A's because they have so many great tips and tricks. And this was our most recent one. So this was the one that we released last week. Um, and it has, Patty did a really great job on this one. We didn't think we were going to be able to release it. It is, oh, it's just so good. It has some different background techniques. She did a little like herringbone. She did some two different snowflake stencils. She did our gnome. She made a little cute beer. She showed our lettering tool. And then there is a texture on the top. You know, with your mittens that you wear, there's a texture. And then she also added some um, snowflakes. We did... Let me check. Um, Speaking of Patty, she says hello from Columbus. She does. I am, um, it currently says I am not online, so you might have to keep me updated. Um, Patty says hello from Columbus. So for those of you who are just joining in, I am solo today. Patty is out of town and um, Morgan is working from home today. Now, we did have a question on this video about how we tied the ribbon with this or the, the rope with this. So what we did with it was we just tied a knot in the front we wove it through put it through the other hole and tied another knot and then up here on top we just held the top tied a little knot through it and then pulled it down so it's just a different little way so that we just weren't hanging it from the the big portion of the rope so that is over on our youtube channel i'm going to refresh this because it looks like i'm frozen up on my end um and also don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter over on studior12.com. As soon as you go to the website, you should get a pop-up that is a wheel. If you have not subscribed to the newsletter, you can spin the wheel and get an opportunity to win um, a little bit of a discount and some fun stuff and some fun prizes that way that you can use towards your next purchase. But with the newsletter, there... Um, that's where you're going to find out about our sales and our discounts and our new products. Um, those of you who are on our newsletter already know that we had some fun with the gnome mitten and a lot of you got that project over the weekend. Also, um, Barb says, do you need to know if we share? Do you do we know if you share or do we need to tell you? Barb, um, yes, if you guys share, be sure to let us know in the comments that you share. It shows us how many people shared, but depending on your privacy settings, we may not be able to see it. So if you don't tell us in the comments and your privacy settings are more private for your page, I might not be able to tell who, act, who actually share. So let me show you what's coming up this week on our YouTube channel. So it's January, you are taking down all of your Christmas decor and you are preparing for winter and we're hoping I think I look today and we're 75 days away from spring so we're getting there we're getting there um, 
But this month, the month of January, we are working on tall porch signs. So the whole month on our YouTube channel, every Saturday, we are going to have tall porch sign tutorials for you. So this one for this week is going to be our welcome. And look, it has a little no. Look how cute he is. So I'm going to show you some different um, tricks with this one. And it's going to kind of be similar to what we're doing today with the background. So we're going to do a little bit of staining. We're going to do a little bit of painting with acrylic. We're going to show you how to paint the snowflakes, make some a little more bold, so some a little lighter so that you can see the contrast there. And then we also are going to show how to do the gnome. So a lot of fun stuff coming up this weekend on our YouTube channel. All right. Barb said, she, oh my gosh, such a cute welcome sign. Amy says she loves porch signs. You guys, our porch signs are, I think, one of our most popular things that we have. We sell a ton of porch stencils and all of our YouTube porch videos are some of our most popular ones. Um, also, what's in your tumbler today? We got an order for one of our live tumblers over the weekend, so you can get on Studio, I know, right? And it was a red one, just like mine. So you can get on studior12.com and you can look up Tumblr and we have several different designs and fun stuff with it. But also we have our Studio R12 Live one and it has all of our quotes that we say, stipple and swirl, um, stencil fan, paint your world pretty, sanding is my cardio. So um, since I'm by myself, I have um, wine today. It's no different from any other day, but we're doing it solo today. All right, so let's talk about giveaways. Um, like, share, and comment so that you can be drawn for a giveaway. I have four things to give away today. We have um, a bin of stencils. Either we might have cut the wrong size or we cut an extra just so we didn't waste any of our mylar. So we have a, um, a big bin of extra stencils. So today before we started, I went through our stencil bin and grabbed some fun things to give to you guys. And I'm going to announce those winners throughout the tutorial today. And then since we're talking about porch signs this week or this month, I have a three piece tall porch stencil that says come gather on our porch and this is going to be our grand prize giveaway. We will announce this winner tomorrow, Wednesday, after one o'clock. That gives everybody who um, can't watch us live a chance to still watch us, like, comment, and share, ask some questions, and we will announce that winner tomorrow. So let's dive in. We're going to talk about base coating today. I have, oh, I, I'm kidding. We're not starting yet because I have a new product to show you guys. Check out our new snowflake surface. How fun is this? We have some tiny snowflakes like the ones that we, oh, the ones that we have used as embellishments. So we decided to make a new snowflake that can be a surface and it's just super fun. We love the shape of this one and we, um, we haven't painted on it yet, but I have some fun ideas on how we can do it. That might be something we do here in the next couple months while we're still in snow mode. All right, so I'm gonna do our first giveaway winner. Our first giveaway winner is, let me see, I just saw something that, um, doo -doo -doo. I'm going to give this one to Debbie, Debbie Buckman Easton. It says coffee. Debbie just said that she is drinking her coffee that it is so cold there. <laughs> it, it is here too. We were just talking about yesterday, we were working on some, filming some projects and I had on a sweater and a long sleeve shirt and it was so hot in here because I had all the layers on. And this morning it was like 19 degrees. The cars were frosted over. And then of course I chose to wear a shirt that's sheer. But I think we're supposed to get potentially five inches of snow between Thursday and Friday. Do you guys have snow? Let us know in the comments below. If you're in snow weather, we've been in like 70 degree Christmas and we're finally getting into the snow. All right, so the first thing we wanna talk about are different ways that you can, different applicators that you can use to base coat your surfaces. So the first, the one that we use most often, depending on the size of our surface, is going to be the polyfoam brush. And 
I saw this down here and wanted to share it with you guys. So this is our poly foam brush and I had one that was a little junky. It, so Patty for a long time did not use poly foam brushes. She just, she didn't like them. All the ones that she found were super floppy, but then we found one that we really love and we love it because I'm going to rip this one up. It's so satisfying to do this. <laughs> The one that we love, we love it because the dowel goes all the way up into the foam. And then after that, let's see, ooh, I need to start working out more apparently. Um, and then after that, you have plastic. So you have material that is going all the way up into the tip of the foam. Now, if you look at this one that we just grabbed from uh, the dollar store, I think this one actually, the dowel stops here and then it has some hard plastic in it. So this one is a little more stable than some of the others we've seen. But if you look at this, look how much it wobbles and flops when you go back and forth on it with your hand. You can see that this is where everything ends and then it just kind of folds over so that when you're painting, you don't really have much stability. So, that is what we use most often. Now, if we are painting something ginormous, like a tall porch sign, then we will likely use a roller. We love a roller for that reason. However, let me tell you what, I was painting one yesterday and I got like the biggest workout. Wait till you guys see the video when it comes out. I know Rusty was laughing. I was sitting there like two arming it and you want to make sure you want to make sure that, you know, when you're base coating that you're going to go in the same direction. So I'm left-handed, so I was base coating the tall porch sign this way, and then I went to this side and it was really awkward. So then I had to like two-hand it to make sure that my, you know, my right arm isn't very strong. And I was going with two hands, so that'll be something enjoyable for you guys to watch when that video comes out. So let me show you here about base coating with the poly foam brush and some tips and tricks on it. Um, we just pour our paint out on palette paper. We use honey bottles for our paint. We are going to just be using acrylic paint today. Any good acrylic paint will do. If it's the cheapest acrylic paint you can find, it's probably not going to be your best option. It'll probably be have some water in it and it'll be really runny. We like our acrylic paint to kind of stand up a little bit on our palette paper. So we are going to put our dome brush in the paint and then we are going to start painting on our surface. And we always like to sweep toward the edges. We don't like to pull when we are coming toward the, like pulling toward the edge, toward us, because then that's going to increase your chances of making a mess on the side of your surface. So one of these surfaces has a natural look and one of the surface has a black around the edges. We typically don't paint our edges. Most of our surfaces we use do have the, the black around the edge and we like to keep it black and it's just a finished look that we have that we like. But I know that a lot of people do like doing their edges. Let me know in the comments below if you guys paint around your edges. And, and when you paint around your edges, what do you do? How do you do that? I'm going to show you if we do paint our edges, what we like to use. So I'm just sweeping, pulling toward me as I'm getting close to me and then pushing away as I am getting toward the edge. So normally when we're base coating, um, when you, if you're looking at how, how many layers do you do? We get that question a lot. How many layers do you do? It's really going to be determined by how you want your project to look. If you are doing more of, a rustic project, there's a chance that you only need to do one layer. If you want something that's going to be really bright and bold, then you are going to do multiple layers. There was a, um, on the welcome sign with the gnome, we did acrylic paint on that and had to do a couple layers on it to make it really bold and really stand out. Okay, so we have our project painted here with our blue. I'm going to put, oh, before I put this in here, I told Steve I was saving this. So am I under the, okay. 
This, um, there are a couple of these that were used last week, probably in our live, but I wanted you to see the amount of brushes that was in here today. I painted a tall porch sign yesterday and these were the amount of brushes that I used. So I wanted to give you guys a heads up when we talk about our dome brushes, when people ask, how many do I need? What should I get? We recommend the five set. It's got five different sizes and from teeny tiny to the biggest, because then you're going to automatically start with five brushes. We use two, four, six, seven, eight, 10, 12. We used 14 brushes yesterday on one project. Now, I will say that as I was doing the project, I did each letter a different color. And then along the side of it was a word that I did in all one color. And I didn't think beforehand and I kept plopping the one color brush into the bucket rather than just keeping it out, tucking it in a um, paper towel or tucking it in a baggie. So you could have, you, I could have used one brush for all of those and that would have saved me a couple brushes. But I'm just going to stick this in here. I'm gonna kind of hide this polyfoam in here and then um, after lunch, I get to clean brushes. So this is what one coat looks like with the acrylic paint. Now I wanna show you what it's going to look like if we use a stain instead. And we had someone asking about our stains. Um, let me see here. Um, we have, we just use these small bottles, these small jars of Min Wax wood finish. It's a penetrating stain. And we have this in several different colors. I think there's five different ones we use. We have a white, we have three browns, and we have a black. So they're just, um, eight, eight ounce jars of the Minwax stain. And then we just put it into our honey bottles just because it just makes things easier and makes things easier for our storage too. Um, Milia, it's Minwax stain. It just says Minwax wood finish. It says it's penetrating, wood finish penetrating stain. And then there's um, several different colors of, of it that they offer. All right, so with our stain, it is going to be the same that we are going to do with the um, with the acrylic. We're just going to come on here and paint away from us and then paint toward us, a nice sweeping motion. You do want to be mindful of what direction you are doing your base coat in. We want to try to keep fairly straight lines and not painting in different directions. And that can be hard on the big surfaces. Yesterday when I was painting the um, top porch sign, there were a lot of times that I just kind of wanted, I just wanted to go side to side because it was easier. But with pine, you'll want to paint in the direction of the, the wood grain. And then on MDF, it doesn't matter as much. We have some projects that we'll do that are squares that will go top to bottom. And then we have some that we'll do and we'll go left to right. And it really just depends on how you want your project to look. If you have a square board and you're wanting to do wood planks, you might want your plank surfaces to go left to right. So then you're going to paint it left to right. But if you have a long surface like this one and you're going to do wood planks, you might want to go up and down because that's how your wood planks would look. So this is just one layer of the stain. And really on this, it looks just about what the acrylic would look like. If you're going to, the, the stain is really going to get soaked in to the MDF. So I'm going to, I'm gonna hit this with a blow dryer one second. Um, tell us in the comments below what you're having for lunch today. Trudy said water-based stain is what I use since I'm using, since I'm stenciling with a water-based paint. Yes, Trudy, we do the same thing. Um, okay, so let me show you here. 
going to give you a little sneak peek. This is part of our lesson that we teached on teached that we have coming out on our YouTube channel on Saturday is oops, sorry. The difference between what let me see how I can hold this here. What a stain versus um, an acrylic paint looks like on a pine surface. So there is going to be a little bit of difference when you are when you are painting on pine versus when you are painting on the MDF. So on the MDF, we don't ever um, uh, seal those before we paint on them. The paint just soaks right into it. On the pine surface, we will always treat these first. We will treat the knots to cover those up so that they don't bleed through if we're using an acrylic paint. We will also put the polyurethane on before we before we paint and after we paint so that we treat that surface. Um, let's see. Debbie asked, is there a vitten, a vitten, a vitten? My goodness, I don't know what's going on with me. I promise I've only had one drink of wine. Is there a video on the blue mitten? Yes, there is a video on the blue mitten. Um, I will share that in the comments below once we are done. We just posted that one on Saturday, so it's one of our most recent ones. Carol asked, how do you treat your knots? Let me see where it is. Oh, here it is. Um, Carol, we treat our knots with bullseye shellac. So it looks like a varnish in the can, and we use um, Steve, oh, the oval glaze brush. Yeah. I was getting ready to ask Steve, what's this brush? This is the oval glaze brush, and we just stick it into the, um, the jar, and then we just paint it right over top of the knots, and it seals over top of it and helps prevent the bleeding through. Um, you don't need to do this if you're using a stain, which I'm gonna talk to you guys about that in the video that's released on Saturday, but if you're using a stain, you're still going to be able to see through your pine surface. So you will not need to use the shellac or the bullseye shellac if you're staining, just if you are um, doing it with acrylic paint. Rusty, can you actually hand me that? Yes, uh, make sure you're over top. There we go. Um, and this is why we do that because the knots bled through. So this was one of our first projects that we needed. Um, Trudy said, do you just coat the knots or the entire surface? We just coat the knots. Um, this was one that we did before we knew that they were going to bleed through. So this is one that shows why you need to treat your knots. Um, Carol said, when I use shellac over knots, it leaves a shiny spot. Um, we ran into that, Carol, when we were painting it. We noticed that as well, and you could see a difference. But this has been sitting here for, what, a week now, Steve? Yeah, ish. A week-ish, and it is not, is not it's not noticeable now. Um, on with Through the stain, it absolutely is, because the stain is not covering it up. Yeah, but. But we covered several knots on the portion that we did the acrylic on. Like this one was really big, and I don't think that you can notice it hardly at all. I mean, you can still see the knot just because it's really gnarly, but there's not there's not any bright spots like there were up here. But that's primarily because the the stain isn't going to cover it up. Penetrate. Guys, I'm getting my workout in picking these things up. Okay, let's go ahead and do another giveaway. Our next giveaway is a bee stencil. And I want to pull out some of our pieces here. Um, this is our Be Happy stencil, and it's going to go to Trudy Carnes. Trudy, did I say your last name right? Let me know. So... This is a, one of our new stencils, actually, and it is super cute. And these new bee stencils that we have come with honeycombs so that you can 
paint your project. You can lay this down here, paint your be happy, and then you can use your honeycombs and paint the honeycombs all around your project. You can paint a couple up at the top, you can paint a couple at the bottom connecting, or you could do the reverse honeycomb and just have the outline of it. So these new bee stencils are super cute and they come with the honeycomb, which I think is something that's amazing that we do here at Studio R12 is, you know, you don't have to buy the, the honeycomb and the bee stencil now because on some of these, they come with it. And you can, huh? Trudy says her husband is a beekeeper. So that's no good. way, Trudy, you guys. I, I tell you what, I knew. I, di I didn't know, I knew. Okay, so I'm going to show you now. So we talked about stain versus the acrylic paint. We talked about the roller versus the polyfoam. I wanna show you how to do the edges and some ways to do them and some ways not to do them. So when we're talking about the edges, let me show you what happens if you pull the paint towards you and you're not paying attention. So see how on the this edge here, we're starting to get a little bit of an overlap. Look how much paint is coming off of the edge because I'm pulling towards me. So that's the reason that we don't do that because it just leaves a mess and a goopy, a goopy mess that you get all over your fingers and all over everything once you start to clean it up. It's okay if that happens, you can fix it. I shouldn't put that in there. You can do a couple of different things. If you are wanting to paint your edges, um, when I first started here, I just used a polyfoam brush and I would dip it into the paint and I would just get the very tip of the polyfoam brush with the paint on it and then I would just tap it across. And it's a little bit of a tedious process because if you start and you go side to side with it, then you're going to get an overlap on the top the same way that we get we just got it on the side when there was too much. So you can just tap it right along. You could use the pointed edge to scrape it, but then again, you're going to risk getting extra paint over the edge, which you can see on the back of it. That's exactly what happened when I started dragging it across. So instead, what we like to use is our ink sweeper, and we have this on studior12.com, and I'll share the link for it later. And you can just put it into the paint, and then you just use it to tap all the way across. It keeps clean edges on both sides and it is just so, so easy compared to having to oh, try to pull that polyfoam brush across and not make a mess. So, so much easier than using the polyfoam. Now with these, um, yes, Elizabeth. Um, Elizabeth asked if the little round ones, the jumbo daubers would work. They do work. Um, I would be careful about um, getting the paint all over it. I would maybe try to pour my paint, you know, in a little bit of a line and then put your, get some of it just on one portion of your jumbo dauber because where it is round, we're running into the same thing. It might be hard to see on camera, but where it's round and the paint is expanding out onto the whole portion of the foam, we're getting a little bit of an edge there. So yes, you can, you have to be careful with it. I recommend the ink sweeper rather than the jumbo dauber if you're going to be doing that. And with these, um, with the poly foam brushes, as well as the, the daubers and the ink sweepers, do not clean those with soap. You are going to run those underneath water and just squish them out just like you would a sponge. If you put soap in them, you are going to be painting with soap for the duration that you're going to be using that brush. Um, so I wanted to show you, I just got this idea and I wanna show you what it looks like about base coating with multiple colors. So. We did this blue, uh, still a little tacky. Remember I blow dried it because I was gonna do something. Now it's still a little wet, it's okay. So I'm gonna get one more of these and we are going to talk about base coating with two different colors. 
And this one we did the blue behind and I'm gonna do a little bit of white over top of it or an off white. So I can show you how it's gonna look if you sand through it. And I also wanna show you here how you can use this white on this portion over here to the side. See how I got most of the paint off and now I'm just kind of sweeping. So then it looks like more of just a rustic look and there's not much paint on it. And that's just something that you can do with playing around and adding adding some different paints. Use your cardboard boxes and use different things that you have around your house. Use your leftover cereal boxes, use your Amazon boxes, and just play around with painting some backgrounds so that you can try some different colors and get some different colors in your palette. I never paint with colors. I always paint with very basic. You can always tell the different ones that I do versus which Patty does. Mine are always really bright and bold with very basic colors and Patty's always have really awesome textures and grains and designs and colors. So you guys will have to start telling us if you can tell the difference in them. So now I'm gonna go over the off-white here with a really rough, rustic um, grit of a sandpaper. And you can see, since this paint's still a little wet, it is just pulling that off a little bit. So then it looks like it has a little bit of a grain and grit to it, and you can kind of see some stripes to it. So that's just a fun way to really quickly do a quick layer of one color, a quick layer of another, and um, sand it away. And we will do that as well with stain. If you're going for a really neutral background that has, um, you kind of want it to still look like a wood, then we will just do a really light stain over it and then paint an off-white or something over top of it and then sand away so that you get some of that bleeding through. Um, and then we have, so I talked about the MDF versus the pine. So the differences in those, how you treat those. Talked about the sanding versus no sanding. So the no sanding is going to give you a really bright, bold project like the ones behind us. And then the sanding is also going to give you a, like the one behind us. So you can see that with the welcome with the mandala, it has the, there was no sanding done on that one. And then with the Studio R12 one, oh, sorry, Rusty, am I in your way? Should I go to another yeah, side? Yeah, the, this way? That, that angle. This way, okay. Sorry, as soon as it popped up on the camera, or on, on the computer is when I started to move. So you can see with the black and white one that that one was really bold. We didn't do any sanding. If we did any sanding, it was just a really, really light grit. So the light grit is what we like to use at the very end of our projects just to get a little bit of the grit off. So when you are stenciling, even if you are the best stenciler in the world and you don't make mistakes with stenciling, you still might feel a little bit of a ridge on your project just because you have layers and layers and layers of paint on that you stencil. So a really light piece of sandpaper or someone told us the other day that they use a brown paper bag, just rubbing that lightly over top of your project is going to help get rid of some of those ridges. Now, I do want to remind you to be careful that if you are sanding, if you are using a sanding block that you have used before, the sanding block right here, we used on a project with either black or really dark gray, and there's leftover on the sander, there's also some spots of red. If you are working on a project that has a white background and you put this over top of it, then you're gonna get this dark and potentially red on your project. And that's no bueno. So check your sandpaper before you use it. Then we use the really light grit or the really heavy grit for wanting to get really chunky stripes, which you can also see since this paint was wet when I started to sand through, it has covered up a portion of the um, a portion of this. So I'll want to make sure that I change this before Patty or I do a tutorial again so that next time we have clean sandpaper. And since I know that I'm gonna have to change that, let me show you how to do it. We've had questions about that. We had a video of it on here somewhere, but who knows where it is now. Um, so with our sanding blocks, 
We, these are an affiliate link, and then we just buy sandpaper and we cut it in strips. We buy big sandpaper strip sheets, we cut them in strips to fit on here. So you are going to pull up the edge, and it has teeth in it, and then you can just pull out the paper, let me see here, rip it, and then pull it out. And then this will be a one that we have a whole bucket of this. So this is brand new, great sandpaper that we can keep and use in the future. We'll pull this portion off, open it up, open the teeth and pull out this as well. I'm probably gonna save this portion too. I'm not gonna save this because it is, it has a lot of paint on it and it's not going to help us with anything. But here's three pieces that we can use. And Patty likes to use these for doing specific things on projects. So if I am coming into this and I want one section, oh, I'm gonna come over here because you know what? I got a little bit too much paint on this portion and I wanna knock it back. I'm just gonna fold this over, wrap it around my finger, and then just start sanding. And then it knocks it back so you don't have nearly as much white or pop of white as what you did. So you can really dig in here and get all the way down to the, the brown, or you can just kind of do it enough to get knocked back. So sanding is something that we talk about often as a way to, you know, fix your mistakes on your project. Um, I do want to show you, I brought this one in. This is one that we did. Um, I did a swappable project a few months ago and I didn't notice it when we started and but one of the projects that I did was painting a can you pop in on this and see so this is just a little jack-o-lantern we love our little jack-o-lanterns we have a whole bunch of them on our our site but on this orange that I used it didn't cover up the MDF so you can I don't know if you can it's very hard, it's to, very hard to see but guys there's like with this, I think I did three layers of this color of orange and you can still see the MDF through it. So let's see, can you see the difference here? So this was a, a color that we used and did I base coat this one, Steve? Do you remember? So what I think I did with this one, so this one I did with just the orange and there wasn't enough pigment in it to cover the MDF. But on the back side of it, when I painted it, I did it with a gray first, and then I did the orange over top of it just so that it covered. So some of your yellow, some of your oranges, some of your reds, you might find that you will want to do a base coat with a gray before you base coat your, um, your project in the color that you want. Um, Darlia says, I like to lightly sand before I wax. Yes, we like to do that too, just to make it nice and smooth. Patty often talks about when you buy something, when you buy a piece of art or a project, we, we see with our hands, we immediately go to touch it and feel how smooth it is. Like guys, I did a really good job at sanding this. It is super smooth. And then I can also tell that I waxed it as well. Um, is gray the best or are there other colors that you could use denise asked that um denise we recommend gray however it's really going to determine be determined by what color you're using so if you are using a red you will not want to base coat with white and then paint red over top of it because then it is going to turn pink now if you are using a yellow and you want your yellow really bright and bold then you might want to use a white or another shade of yellow, like a really light banana yellow to do the background. So if I'm doing this color, you could do white, you could do a banana yellow, or you could do a gray. And this is something that you'll just kind of want to practice with. We did, I think it's the all is calm, all is bright. I'll share that below. Um, the when Lena did that, she used a, a like a shimmery paint with it, and she used a couple of different colors to base coat the letters before she put the shimmer over it, and it completely changed the look of the project 
when she changed the different color that it was based in. So that might be something that you play around with, but you can, with a yellow, use white, yellow, or gray. But with reds, we always recommend doing gray. Um, just bought some junk. So Glenda said she was wondering about painting MDF. Glenda, we typically do most of our projects on MDF. Um, if you, you said she bought some hearts, we would recommend if you are going to be painting something that has edges, like a heart, that you use something like the Jumbo Dauber with it to help tap on the paint rather than try to use a brush just because the brush is going to potentially get to get more junk along the edges. And if you have a lot of edges with your heart, or if you have that little portion at the top that you know it's going to cave in, that it might be hard to get that cleaned out with paint. So we would recommend the Jumbo Daubers for that. Um, Nicole asked, do we sell the paint? We do not currently sell paint. Um, we have been in talks with a company right now. We use a bunch of different brands of paint. We have been in talks with a company to try to mainstream our paint so that when we give a project um, eons ago when Patty was first starting, she did use a specific kind of paint and she would be able to list the paint colors. Right now we are not able to do that, so we are working on it, but we don't have a timeline for it. It's been something that we've been working on, what, Steve, for probably nine months? It's been a while. It's, it's been close to a year. I, um, I started in this position at the in around end of last February. And it's been shortly after that that we started working with this company. So we are we are working on it. Um, we just can't do it yet. Um, Trudy asked, how do you wax and what type of wax? Um, Trudy, we haven't talked about that today, but I can. Might be the door. Yeah, let me see here. Um, here's special we use a couple of different things. Um, on most of our projects, if we are doing a project that is going to go indoors, then we will use a wax. If we are doing a project that is going to go outdoors, then we will use a polyurethane. Um, we either use the, I don't know that I have it over here, um, the Rust-Oleum polyurethane is one that we use a lot, or we use the DecoArt multi-purpose sealer. This is something that we carry, and you can just apply it with the um, the roller makes it super easy. But if we're doing an indoor project, we use this Minwax Paste Finishing Wax, and it comes in a couple of different colors. You can either use a, woo, went flying, a natural or a special dark, and that's gonna be determined by which, pro which um, what your project looks like. If you have a really pretty white project, then you're not going to want to use the dark because it it's going to change the color. Let me show you real quick. And when we apply these, we have these um, what are the sponges that we offer on our website that you can use. And I just put a little baggie on my hand. And so you can see the dark is really dark. This is a good one to help do a little bit of antiquing on your projects, maybe to add a little bit if you have a really dark project. This is one you can use. Or it comes in a natural. I'm glad that that showed up on the camera because sometimes, sometimes when we do that, it doesn't always show up. But there's also a natural that you can use. This one's getting a little dry on us. I think we need a new sponge. Um, that just is going to have the natural effect here. And there we go. And then you can also um, take your sanding block and go over it after you wax. And then you can wax again if you want just to make it really nice and smooth. But it's so smooth. Let me see if, if I rub my fingers on this, let me see if you can hear it. So this is the side that I waxed and then went over with the um, sanding block. Okay, can you hear that? Okay, so then this is the side that I didn't wax or didn't sand. Huge difference. Um, and it feels different. It feels it feels a lot different just on your hand. So 
but the wax is going to um, the wax is going to kind of seal your paint in. Now, one thing that you are going to want to be mindful of is if you wax and then you want to make changes, you are going to have to sand through that wax so that you can go back and sand, um, go back and paint because you're not going to be able to paint over the wax. Um, there's something I just thought of. Let me try to remember it. I'm going to go do a couple more giveaways. We are um, kind of wrapping up now. I think I've covered about everything that was on my list. If you guys have any more questions, um, go ahead and ask them or put some things in the comments that you want links for and I will share that. Um, don't forget to like, share, and comment so that you can be entered to win our grand prize giveaway, which is a six foot um, welcome porch stencil. And it's like a, I think it's a $44 value. So those stencils are wonderful. They come in three, um, three pieces actually all right rusty we're going to show them how to do a porch stencil so with our stencils this one actually we are going to start on top so with our porch stencils this one comes in a a three piece so it is come gather on our porch so when you get your um your pine board you're going to go to the hardware store and ask for a six foot by 12 inch by one inch and there might be a little bit of a variance there might be some um might be a little bit bigger than 12 inches it might be a little bit smaller than 12 inches but all of our stencils are 12 inches across so with this one you will lay this down on your project and you will paint come gather on our p <laughs> And then after you get your P done, you will take that off and then you will lay down the second one. So on this second one, Rusty, see if you can see how we do our porch stencils is instead of just letting you go to try to figure out where to line it up, we do a small etching. Let me yeah. see. Can you see it? Yeah. Good. You can do a small etching. So what you'll do is when you get your P painted, you will line your pea up with this little portion at the, the top of the stencil, which is the bottom of the pea, and then you'll know where to put this other stencil. And then the same goes for the bottom, um, the bottom one, which has the R, you'll paint your R, and then this has a little etching for the R as well. All right, um, I'm going to do another giveaway, and we have Sue, <laughs> Darlia said P Orch, um, Sue Bruns. Sue is the winner of our Eat stencil. So this is a super fun one. Patty has painted some really beautiful signs with this Eat stencil. So Sue, we will send that to you. And then I'm going to do one more. I'm gonna do this one. This is gonna to go to Pat Will. Um, and then it, it says, Love to canoe, and it has some super fun things on here. I love our stencils that come with like the paddles and oars. I always like to dress them up. So with this one, we did a tall porch sign that has a huge oar all the way down it. And then we did some tape tricks and we did some tricks with some of our other stencils and we made designs on it. So it was like an old rustic one and it was super cute. So. All of you who have won our giveaways, we will send you a message and get your address. Um, Pat asked, um, Pat said, you can wax over all paints. I just thought it thought it was just chalk paint. Um, Pat, chalk paint is, as far as I know, always an acrylic paint. So if you are using acrylic paints, you can wax over them. We do not use any oil-based paints. They take a long time to dry. So what we'll do is we just always use our acrylic paints and then you can do wax over it. We also have, and I got this out and I put it away. We also have our Clapham's beeswax, which is one that we use mostly for um, doing a, a, a wax resist distress kind of look. So you'll put paint a little bit of a background, you'll put some wax on the project and then you'll paint over it. And then when you sand, the wax will pull the paint away. So that's it's, it's one of our super cool tricks, but you can also wax your projects with this. You can 
And it's food safe. And it's, it's yeah, it's food safe. And that's that's one of the reasons that we have it. In our boutique, we do um, custom cutting boards and we etch really cool designs in them. So we etch it and then we oil it and then we put the wax over top of it so that it makes it food safe. So if you're doing um, trays or anything that you would maybe want to put cookies on, if you're doing like cookies for Santa, then you could use this beeswax and you can either apply it with a paper towel or with a sponge. I would say that if you are going to do this, that you have something specific that you use to apply it so that you're not applying the other wax and then applying this wax because that's going to take the food safe out. But it's a really soft wax. Um, it's a little bit thicker. I don't know if you can see it on my finger. It's a little bit thicker than a Vaseline, but it's still really, it's really soft and really smooth. Okay, guys, I think that is it. Make sure you like, comment, and share. Um, oh, I'm getting more quick questions in. Uh -huh. If you use the wax resist technique, do you have to seal the surface before stenciling? Um, Teresa, that is going to be, Teresa asked, if you use the wax resist technique, do you have to seal the surface before stenciling? That is going to be up to you. So if you want to just make the background the portion that the wax resist is over and then you want to have a really bold stenciling, then you can um, use a mild degreaser. Um, we have our ZEP cleaner that we use. So if we would be doing that, we would do a ZEP cleaner and just kind of get that extra wax residue off and then stencil over top of it. But if you want your stenciling portion to also be part of the chipped away, then you won't actually, um, you won't need to worry about sealing it. You can just wait until you get the stenciling done and then you can go ahead and do your um, sanding and then it'll take away the portion of your stenciling and your background. Okay guys, we will see you next week, but I do have an announcement for next week. So next week's gonna be a little different too. We're just throwing all kinds of crazy things at you. Um, last week we were on Wednesday, this week it's just me. Next week, Patty and I and Peyton, who is the manager of our boutique, we are headed back to Atlanta so that we can get some good ideas to bring home to you guys and see what the trends and tips and tricks and all the fun things that we're gonna, we're looking out for gnomes. Let me tell you, the gnomes when we were there in July, they were, we were heavy on gnomes. So we are going to look for gnomes. We're gonna see if they're still hot. Don't worry, we'll tell you. Um, and we, last time we were there, lemons were still popular. So we're really excited to go and see what is on trend for 2022 so that we can know what to come back and make stencil design wise for you guys. So we are going to be in Atlanta next week, but Patty and I still plan to go live. So. We're just gonna do it from my phone, from probably one of the, the lunch rooms, wherever we are um, around 12 p.m. Eastern next um, Tuesday, but we do plan to go live. We won't be able to do any show and tell, but if you guys do have some questions that you know, you're thinking of that are just things that we can explain verbally or anything like that, maybe you just want to ask what we're seeing, um, then we will be able to do that. So like, share, comment, Go subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go over to studior12.com and spin the wheel and maybe get yourself um, a prize or two and um, sign up for a newsletter. All right, we'll see you next week.